Thank you so much for joining Hill City Church Online. For more information about how we do life together, you can find us at hillcitychurch.ca. We would love to help you discover your next steps in this journey of living and loving like Jesus. Now stay tuned for another encouraging and inspiring message from Hill City Church. Good morning, Hill City. It's so great to see you. Thank you for joining us. I love, um, I know we don't get to see each other's faces on Sunday mornings, but it's really fun in the live stream to just kind of see everyone's names pop up. And it's just, it's just fun. We enjoy it. So if we've never met, my name is Jenny Tarswell. I've been part of Hill City Church for over 30 years. And right now I serve on the leadership team with my husband, Joel, if you haven't met him yet. And I'm also on staff here. So it's a pretty great, fun time. And um, we both just consider it such a great privilege and honor to serve here on this church. And uh, even like this during this season, it's been crazy, right? Like it's just been nuts and working things out. And it's been so uh, just a privilege for me to sit at the table with some amazing leaders and people as we work hard to figure out what you need, what this community needs, and more importantly, what the Holy Spirit is saying and where um, what God is doing in all this. It's just just been a joy. Uh, it's been difficult, but it's been a joy. And and any change worth having is worth going for. So even though it's hard, it's been really great. Um, I'm also a mother of two to two amazing kids, Lucy and Emmaus. Lucy is 11, almost 12, and Emmaus just turned eight. Uh, and they have been handling this season like champs with mostly good attitudes, uh, maybe even sometimes better than me. <laughs> Um, but they have been flexing with us and working with us on our new schedules. Uh, they miss, of course, their friends and their families and their classmates, but we're making it. Both of my kids are just, they're just great. It's really fun to do life with them. They are creative. They are funny. Uh, they are crazy. And, uh, and they work hard to serve the people around them, which is beautiful to watch. So it's been really great. I love my family. Um, so on that note, I wanted to say happy Mother's Day. Uh, definitely not a day we would imagine celebrating kind of like this. Uh, I hope and I pray that there will be some time for you today to feel cared for and loved. I hope you're able to connect with some of these amazing women in your life, whether it's through Zoom or a text or a phone call or maybe a picnic in the backyard, uh, you know, things like that. I really hope that you can do that. And we all know that on the best of days, Mother's Day can be so hard and confusing and bring up such a mess of emotions. And I just want to say that that's totally okay. Out of any year, let's let this year be unconventional. And I want to say, don't worry about expectations on anything, what you think this day should look like or what you should feel like. Just have fun with it. And on that note, because we're so unconventional, I can do something that I wouldn't get to do on a normal Sunday morning when we're live is I can give a shout out to my mom because normally she would kill me because all of you would turn and look at her, but nobody can look at her. So shout out to my mom, Doris Barker, who is my favorite mom, I guess. Um, she's been great. She is a hard worker. She taught me how to love learning and to love reading. Um, she just serves people around her really well. She just looks after people. She is an encourager. She has so much wisdom inside of her that she can pull out and give to people. Um, it's great. It's, it's just, she's just a great lady. So if you do know her, if you don't know her, Doris Sparker, best mom ever. All right, so she probably still will kill me, but I'm not really seeing her right now, so it's okay. Um, so as I was thinking about what I wanted to share today, I came across something uh, someone wrote that I think truly honors what the heart of Mother's Day is all about. Uh, so I didn't write this. I forgot to write her name down, so I'm so sorry, but it's, it's, it is what it is. All right, so to those who gave birth this year to their first child, we celebrate with you. To those who lost a child, we mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badge of food stains, we appreciate you. To those who experience loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions, or running away, we mourn with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with pokes, prods, tears, and disappointment, we walk with you. Forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't mean to make this harder than it is. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms, we need you. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate with you. To those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance with your children, we sit with you. To those who lost their mothers, 
we grieve with you. To those who experienced abuse at the hands of your own mother, we acknowledge your story and we are sorry. To those who have lived through driving tests, medical tests, and the overall testing of motherhood, we are better for having you in our midst. To those who have had abortions, we care about your stories and you are loved. To those who are single and long to be married and mother your own children, we mourn that life has not yet turned out the way you longed for it to be. To those who step parent, we walk with you on these complex paths. To those who envision lavishing love on grandchildren, yet this dream is not to be, we grieve with you. To those who, who have emptier nests in the upcoming year, we grieve and rejoice with you. To those who place children up for adoption, we commend you for your selflessness and remember how you hold that child in your heart. And to those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. Here's why I love that. It embraces the fact that there is no one right thing, that there is no perfect story. It acknowledges that motherhood has so many facets and pieces and seasons. And for that matter, whether you are a mother or not, female or male, isn't life just like that? It looks so different for everyone. And that's what I love about God. He has so many different facets. He fully understands that the original plan hasn't gone to plan. He knows about alternate endings and he has a solution for every single one. He is the most creative being that I know, the most colorful, the most innovative. He sees the detours and disappointments before we ever get there and he works with that. He can do anything. He's not caught off guard by pandemics or the waiting season or murder hornets or death. <laughs> He's not caught off guard. And that's really what I felt like to talk about this morning. I want to talk about disappointment in life and how to deal with it. When not everything turns up roses, how do we get through that? I wanted to share um, a bit of my journey and some of my experiences with disappointment. And not that I've handled it perfectly or even well at times, but I do feel like I've learned some things uh, that might help you. <clears throat> so I'm just going to pray for us. Father God, I thank you that you are the creative God who sees our ways. You go before us, you're behind us, you're around us, you know our stories, you know the beginning and the end. I pray that this morning as we talk about disappointments and things that hurt us, that you would be there in the room with us. Lord, that you would comfort us, but you would also put your finger on the places that need your touch and your healing. Lord, I pray that we would have soft hearts to respond to your voice this morning. And I thank you for everyone listening who is stepping in, leaning in to what you have to say this morning. Just bless them in your name. Amen. <clears throat> so for today, uh, we're technically putting a pause on our Unforced Rhythm series that we've been in. And if you haven't been staying up with it, I, I suggest go back and listen to them. We've done about, I think, two or three weeks of it, Unforced Rhythm, having learning how to have spiritually healthy lives in a world that isn't so healthy. And it's been really good. There's been some practical things we can do. There's some realignment, readjusting that we can do in our hearts. So definitely go back and listen to it. Uh, but for today, we just kind of wanted to put a pause on that. Um, but as I've been praying and about what I wanted to talk about, I realized that I truly believe that we are not going to find our rhythm with God, this unforced rhythm, until we choose to remember who he is and what he can do. We need to see him as the one who creates beauty out of disappointment. When we look to Jesus, he shows us that beautiful things can grow out of the dirt. And the story isn't over until he says it is. So as we go, and in case I forget to say it again, please hear me when I say that disappointment is real. Your pain is real. Your hurts and your losses are absolutely legitimate. They must be processed. They must be walked through and they must be talked through. I will never put an end date on how long that process takes for you. So please hear me when I say that. They are real. But we also must know that disappointment is not the final destination. It can't be the end for us. We cannot get stuck there. We cannot set up our camp and get comfortable in this place because as Jesus people, as resurrection people, we know that death and loss are not the end of our story. It's not the end of your story. 
And when we forget to look at him as the one in control, our despair, our disappointment grows bigger. It becomes our place of residence. And when we forget to let him be in control, we spend all of our energy and time and resources just trying to be okay and try to hold it together and put it back together. We waste all that time and energy trying to make it better ourselves rather than trusting the almighty God. It's not over until he says it is. His timing will probably look different than ours. His solutions will probably look different than what we think the solution should be, but they will always be better than what we can come up with. Hebrews 12, verse 1 to 2 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and this sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. And where it says, throw off everything that hinders and the sin. We're not just, so we're not just talking about sin, but I think it can mean throw off the disappointment, throw off the, the disillusionment and the pain, throw it off so that you can run with your eyes fixed firmly on Jesus. In other translations, it calls him, um, in this verse, it said the pioneer and perfecter. Other translations say founder or author of our faith. And if you go to the Greek in that, what that word can mean, it means the chief leader, the prince, the one that takes the lead in anything. And thus gives us an example, a predecessor in a matter, a pioneer, a captain. I love that. Jesus is the captain of our stories. He is the pioneer because he has gone before us and he can help us with our stories. And he is the one we want to write our story. We want him to be the one who, who, who can make something beautiful out of our messes and disappointments because he's really the only one who can do the best job at it. And our rhythm comes from learning how to take our eyes off the temporary and reminding ourselves of the truth of who God is and what he can do. So I wanted to share a little bit of um, just this path that Joel and I and our kids, Lucina Maeus, have been on lately. Uh, so back in 2015, we felt that the Lord put um, an idea in our heads and in our hearts, and we realized that we were called to adopt. And uh, it was actually a really easy decision because it really came directly from the Lord and we were excited about it. So we had to go through all these steps and we had to go through schooling, like not schooling, but lessons and, and learn and fill out forms and get checked by the police and, and lots of different things. So by the spring of 2016, we had our dossier prepared with our agency and uh, it got sent down. We felt again from the Holy Spirit that we needed to kind of put our file through uh, to the country of Haiti and to adopt from Haiti. And so we were, we knew that that was from the Lord. And so we said, okay, God, we're going to have open hands. We will take any ages um, under a certain age. We will take boy or girl. We will take a sibling group, open hands, because we knew that he was in this. Um, so we entered that. We were excited. Um, we, yeah, it was just from the Lord. It has uh, now been four years. <laughs> uh, there has been really no movement. Haiti has had just a really rough time. And so things are very slow. Things aren't happening. Uh, this is not what we signed up for. We truly believe because God was in it, this was going to move faster. We knew it would take a while. We know it's a process. We're submitted to that, but we really felt that God was moving. But it's been four years. And so what is going on? Um, End of November last year, 2019, our agency uh, contacted us and said, hey, would you guys be interested putting your file uh, into another country for this specific sibling group that, that is looking for a uh, forever home? And uh, it was in the country of Taiwan. And it really caught us off guard for a while. And we thought, well, God, you told us Haiti. So what, what is this about? But as we processed it and talked it out and talked in, with some friends and family, we realized, no, God was in this. And he was telling us to move our file, uh, to put our names out there. So we did that uh, probably, yeah, in November, December. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. We started making plans. Uh, we were told in mid-January that our file was one of the ones. I don't know how many more, but we're one of the files and the families that were going to be presented to the biological family. Uh, for them to make a decision. And we really weren't surprised because we felt God in all of this. We were excited. Uh, we were like, of course, of course our file's going there because that's the logical next step. Um, yeah, and our agency even told us to start uh, working on the immigration process. So that gave us a ton of hope. 
uh, at the end of January, we found out that the biological family chose a different family and it was a no to our family. And uh, when we got that phone call, Joel, we were here working. Joel came and sat in my office and we kind of just looked at each other like, what? That doesn't make sense because we knew God was in it. He told us that this is what we're doing. And, and we had prepared our homes, started to prepare like our homes and our hearts and making plans. Our kids, we were praying for them. Like we, it was the most shocked and disappointed that we had been in a really long time. And it didn't make sense. Uh, and while I would never want to undermine the pain of a physical miscarriage, uh, I think we felt even like a portion of what that pain is. Cause like I said, we were making room. Like we knew, we knew what these kids names meant in Taiwan and, and we were imagining what life was like and then door closed. And so what do we do with that? It, it really did mess with us a little bit. It rocked us. We were confused. We were disheartened. Our kids who have been going through this process with us, they were, they were confused and hurt and disappointed and, and just what God, we thought you told us to do this. And now this door is closed <clears throat> and it would have been really easy to stay there in that place, to be mad and to just be disappointed and just to give up and say, well, I guess this is it. We're done waiting. Um, but as I reflected on this, I think that because over the years I have purposed and been intentional about creating a rhythm of looking to God and taking him my pain, I was able to do that in this situation. And rather than let the pain take me out, I've got to let him figure it out. I mean, all of this started with, it was his idea anyway, so he must know what he's doing. Um, so we're just going to keep waiting. And what's been crazy is even in the past few weeks, a couple of doors have kind of cracked open for us. They're like, oh, is this it? Door shut. Is this it? Door shut. Two doors in one week. I, I was like, what? I honestly said to Joel, like, what the heck is going on? I don't understand this story. And I don't know why this is happening. I don't know. But I'm choosing to believe that God's not done and that something's going to happen out of this mess of disappointment because he told us to. And I trust him. See, part of our rhythm of G as Jesus people is ha to have this perspective in our lives. God is a miracle worker. He can take our disappointments, our losses, our pain, and make something beautiful out of them. He works miracles with what we see as dead ends. Our job is to just, and I say just, it's not just, but our job is to believe him that he will do it. And, uh, sorry, <laughs> Psalm 27, verse 13 to 14 says, I would have despaired unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. And this verse was written by uh, a man named King David who didn't start out as a king. He was a psalmist. He was a shepherd. And if anyone can talk about disappointment and discouragement, it could be David. If you don't know his story, you can read about it in the Old Testament uh, in a couple of different books that are found in the Old Testament. But his life was one of rejection and waiting and loss and confusion and offense. His like some of his kids died. He was kicked out of town. He um, his his leader, his mentor wanted to kill him. Like he had a it was just a really rough time. God told him he would be king and it took years for that to happen as, as David had to live a life in hiding. But then he said, I would have lost it if I didn't believe that God is good. And we will stay camped in the valley of disappointment if we don't sometimes forcibly take our heads and look to the Lord and put our eyes on him as the miracle worker. I would have lost heart. I will lose heart unless I tell myself, tell my soul to look for and believe in the goodness of God. Psalm 23, actually Pastor Mitch and Bonnie read it last week. Um, and I want to read it out of the Passion Translation. Just verse four. It says, Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me for you already have. You remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I'll never be lonely for you are near. So it says, even when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he will lead us out if we trust him because we are not meant to live in that valley. You are not meant to 
get stuck there and we don't have to. There's a way out and our rhythm becomes one of walking, taking that next step and looking at his face. It's one of surrendering our pain, our disappointment, our losses to the only one who can fix it well. It might sound like I'm saying the same thing over and over again, and it's because I am. (laughs) That's exactly what I'm doing because I am convinced that knowing how to look at to Jesus is the one of the most valuable muscles a disciple of him needs. We must believe that he will come through for us. We need to know him as a miracle worker, and we must allow him to move in as the one who is in charge. We must let him be the author and finisher and captain of our stories, whatever they look like. I do not believe that we are created and designed to be the sole gardeners of our own lives. We are the seeds. We are the seeds that grow and get pruned and shaped. Our garden beds get weeded and fertilized. You want to take that far and imagine what I'm saying? (laughs) Fertilizer happens, right? Um, But he is the one who works with us and helps us produce fruit. He wants us to produce fruit. And when we allow him access, he can get in there and use and and create purpose out of the weeding and fertilizing times. I really think that God loves gardening. I think he loves plants and trees and flowers. I mean, think of all the different varieties and colors there are. Like he did that on purpose, created such a variety because he loves it. When you read through the Bible, even Old and New Testament, again, you see so many scriptures dedicated and talking about outside things, trees and plants and seeds. People are compared to trees. Um, It's just everywhere. When you read in the New Testament, when Jesus was walking the earth, he told so many stories and parables about seeds and dirt and trees and vines. He talked to trees. He would notice the people sitting under the trees. I just really think he loves this aspect of creation and uses it to relate to us and speak to us all the time. So there's a song that recently came out from Elevation Worship called Graves to Gardens. I think many of you have heard it. And that's really why this message is even called that graves into gardens today, because it's such a beautiful picture to me. When we think something is over, God is just getting started. So I wanted to read you some of the lyrics to the song if you haven't heard it yet. Um, So I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all and you still call me friend because the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. And there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Because there's nothing, nothing better than you. You turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You are the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You are the only one who can. And so I would ask you, do you believe God is a miracle worker? Do you believe he's a miracle worker in your life? And regardless of whether you have experienced a miracle or not, and it's maybe even hard to see him working at all, do you trust him when he has said this? Do you trust this facet of his character, whether you can see it with your eyes or not? Uh, This was something that I really had to wrestle through. It's probably about 15 years ago-ish. I had believed God would heal a really special woman in my life. And, and I fully believe that that was his promise. And, and she passed away and I didn't understand. And, and I was really angry. (laughs) Actually, I was really upset. Um, yeah. And I had to sit and wrestle with that. And that was hard. And I was in a dark, dark time. And I remember sitting on my bed, just being like, Lord, I thought you were a miracle worker. I thought you promised her health and her healing. And, and now I just got back from her funeral. I don't understand. And so then I felt inside, God just said to me, okay, stop believing that I do miracles. That's okay. You can believe everything else about me, but you can stop believing that I do miracles. And I uh, had to sit for that with that for a little bit, just kind of like, is that possible? Can I do that? And, and the final conclusion, and I knew he knew that I would get here, but the final conclusion was like, no, if I'm saying that I believe in the Lord, if I'm a Jesus follower and I'm listening to his voice, I have to believe everything he says he is. I have to choose that he's a miracle worker, regardless of whether I see it or not. I will choose to believe him. Do I believe that he will come through to me? whatever it looks like in his timing, in his will, and in his way. 
So my new rhythm has become since that time. And I say it often. I say, God, you are good all the time. You are good. Whether I see it or not, you are good. You are the almighty God who can do anything because nothing is too hard. Nothing is too beyond his reach. I remind myself of who he is, who he says he is, because I'm choosing to believe him. I choose to believe that he is not a liar. I remind myself by reading of his miracles in the Bible and reading them over and over again. I celebrate with my friends and with others when I hear how he's working in their lives and I cheer them on because I know if God's working in their life, he can work in my life. I look for him moving in my everyday life and in the lives of others. Because I think, what if we took our hands off and didn't put a definition on what a miracle is? I think if we took our expectations off, what we think our story should look like, it's going to be easier for us to get out of the disappointment camp. It's going to get it, make it a little bit easier to walk out. So if this is a new thought or a new muscle you're developing, I encourage you to keep working it. Read over Jesus' miracles in the Bible. Ask people for their stories of God working in their lives. Surround yourselves with music and songs that celebrate the God who turns graves into gardens. Get these songs stuck in your head. I mean, we always have songs stuck in our head. Let's choose which ones we wake up with or that run endlessly through our mind. Let's choose them. Let those kinds of thoughts get into your spirit and you'll start getting stronger in this. Um, Elevation, who wrote the Graves Into Garden songs, ha- just came out with a couple of new songs with insanely strong lyrics that totally speak to all the same thing that we're talking about. And I've seen most of y- a lot of you posting it saying, we're singing this. This has been on repeat. And I love it. And I really think that our, our souls and our spirits crave the kind of truths that we are hearing in some of these songs coming out, these worship songs. And I know that there's some through all the years that we just cling to as truth because our spirits and our souls need this rhythm. So because I love lyrics, I just want to read you a couple of these songs and then you're going to have to go find them for yourselves and listen to them. There's a song called Rattle and I'm just going to read a few of the lyrics. Friday's disappointment is Sunday's empty tomb. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise make a dead man walk again. Open the grave. I'm coming out. I'm gonna, it's so hard not to sing this. I'm going to live, going to live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. You're not going to run out of miracles anytime soon. Resurrection power runs in my veins too. I believe there's another miracle here in this room. What if we believed this with our whole hearts, that our great God can turn death into something beautiful? He's not running out of miracles anytime soon. There's another one called Testimony. Come together, sons and daughters, fought with blood and washed in water. Sing the graces of this spirit, son and father. Our God will finish what he has started. Yes, our God will finish what he has started. This is my testimony from death to life because grace rewrote my story. And this, this line gets me all the time. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Now, I'm not saying that it's easy to always believe that God can do anything because it's not easy. It's super hard. Disappointment gets so loud sometimes. Pain shouts in our faces. But if we create this rhythm and this pattern of taking it to God, when we have beat a path to Jesus' feet, Every day, it becomes this habit that will save us. It will walk us out of this, the pain of disappointment and loss and despair. This is part of the process. As you work it out, this will help you. It will lead us out of the darkness when we can't see any light. There's a pretty beautiful scene in the Bible in the New Testament that I saw in a new light um, as I've been considering this thought about graves into gardens. So it's actually a story that we read pretty calmly at Easter. So some of you maybe recently heard it last month. So Jesus has died on the cross. It's been a few days. Uh, some people, his disciples, his followers woke up one early to run to the tomb where Jesus had been buried. So these two men got up, went to the tomb uh, with a woman named Mary, and they saw that the body was gone. They were confused, and it says that they left and went home. But this woman, Mary, who was with them, 
She got there and she saw and she stayed there trying to process through this disappointment. So this is taken from John 20, verse 11 to 16. So Mary arrived back at the tomb, broken and sobbing. She stooped to peer inside and through her tears, she saw two angels in dazzling white robes sitting where Jesus' body had been laid, one at the head and one at the feet. Dear woman, why are you crying? They asked. Mary answered, they have taken away my Lord and I don't know where they've laid him. Then she turned around to leave and there was Jesus standing in front of her, but she didn't realize that it was him. And he said to her, dear woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? And Mary answered, thinking he was only the gardener. Sir, if you have taken his body somewhere else, tell me, I will go and... Mary, Jesus interrupted her. Turning to face them, she said, Rabboni, which is Aramaic for my teacher. Have you ever seen that before, that Mary thought Jesus was the gardener? What? What was Jesus doing that she saw him as that? What was his posture? What? I realized he maybe just looked like a man in, in robes, but because I'm a creative sort, I just thought, was he maybe like smelling some flowers? Was he maybe like had his hands in some dirt, kind of like feeling it again? I don't know. But he looked like a gardener to her. And so in the middle of her pain and her disappointment, he comes as this man, a keeper of a garden, and interrupts her and breaks through her disappointment, breaks through her pain, and says, Mary, I'm right here. And then allows her to change her posture. Her tears stop. She stands up and she has purpose again and she can celebrate. Right in the middle of that, this gardener, this magnificent gardener interrupts her. The one who looks in the dirt and dead things and call forth calls forth life. And the best part is that he still does this. He loves to do this. Naturally, I think, I mean, we're in spring. Uh, Joel and I and the kids last, yesterday, we were like digging weeds out of our garden, planting some new blossoms, but you see it every spring. Color comes back to our world. Flowers bloom from dormant seeds. Um, the blossoms, I think like the cherry tree, the blossoms are everywhere. Maybe it's a mess, but it's also really beautiful. And it reminds us it's going to be okay. Winter is over. I don't know all of your stories. I know some, and I've seen God do amazing things in your lives. I'm standing and believing with some of you in this waiting difficult season or in a time of mourning. I know some of you who have had such a hard, you have a hard time on days like this where we're supposed to be celebrating motherhood and, and it's not what you thought it would be. I know your stories. But if you let him today, our great and colorful and creative Lord can come in and remind you of who he is. Because when has impossible ever stopped him? Because if you're not dead, then he's not done. So because I'm a mom, as I get ready to end, I'm going to put on my mom voice just a little bit and give you a few pieces of homework. So, hey, I'm doing school at home with the kids. I'm in this mode. You just got to roll with it with me. So... Number one, if you have seen God working in your life lately, big, small, whatever it is, tell somebody about it. Your story is going to help others see the goodness of God. So I would encourage you, post it online, share a picture, text someone and say, hey, this is what God did. And it doesn't matter what it looks like. If God's moving in your life, you talk about it. Number two, if you are really going through it, the valley of the shadow of disappointment, of pain, of hurt, loss, I would say find these three songs that I talked about. They're really easy to find. It's an album by Elevation Worship called Graves Into Gardens. And just have those on replay. Turn them up. You don't even have to know the words, but there's something about the beauty of strong lyrics that can get in. They're anointed words that will help you process things, will help shake up the, if you feel stuck in this pain, it will come in and wash and remind you of who our God is. I think for all of us, no matter where our point of the story is, we all need to be prayed for. We all need to know that people are standing beside us and believing with us to offer comfort. So would you pray for somebody today? It can be really easy, even as you're watching on this live stream and you see names, maybe a name jumped out, just pray for them. You don't have to know their story. You just need to pray, like go to the Lord and say, God, move on behalf of this person. Make their story richer. Would you answer their prayers? Or you maybe you do know somebody and you want to connect with them. I just say, find someone to pray for today. And then I would say, ask somebody to pray for you today, which is maybe even a little bit riskier. And again, you don't have to tell your story. You could just text somebody. You can just say, hey, somebody could pray for me. We all need it. We need to be surrounded by people of faith 
hold each other up and say, God is who he says he is. And then finally, and maybe this is all a new thing to you, and maybe you wouldn't even consider yourself a Jesus person. That's okay. We're so glad you're here. And I would ask you, the way that you are uh, dealing with pain and disappointment, is it working for you? How's that working? Um, Are you finding hope and comfort in the midst of everything? And if you're not, we would love to introduce you to Jesus and this God that I've been talking about who takes ugly, broken things and makes them beautiful because he does it. He actually does. And we would love to connect with you on that. We would love to pray for you, talk you through it, talk about it, whatever you need. So I would encourage you, reach out. You can connect with us. You can send us a private message. You can, I mean, if you want to put it in the comments, somebody will definitely reach out to you. But let us introduce you to this great God. We'd love to connect with you. So I'm just, those are my thoughts. I'm going to pray for us. I know who wants to talk about disappointment on a beautiful day, but I think we have to because this is our rhythm. This is the kind of people we want to be that say we look to the Lord who will answer our questions. We look to the Lord who makes things beautiful. So I'm going to pray. Father God, I thank you so much that you are good. God, you are good even when we can't see it, even when we can't feel it, even if we don't even acknowledge you, you are good and you are working things out for us. Even when we don't understand it, even in the middle of our pain, you are there with us. And so I just pray that you would come, that you would bring comfort to all of us who are needing it, to all of the, of us with questions and with uh disillusionment and confusion, Lord, that you would just come in and bring your peace. Lord, that you would meet us like you did with Mary in the garden, that you would interrupt us in our pain and show us who you are, that you are the gardener of our lives. Lord, we look to you to be the one. Would you take control? Because what I'm doing isn't working. (laughs) What I do with my own hands isn't, isn't bringing me peace and comfort, God. So I need you to come. Lord, we look to you. I pray for all of the the women who are celebrating or not celebrating Mother's Day today that you would just give them a special extra love today. We all need you, but just maybe a little extra for, for us women today, Lord. Little surprises, some fun. Lord, I thank you for Hill City Church. I thank you for all these people watching and listening and for those else not even part of our community yet. God, I thank you that you love us and you care about us. In your great name. Amen. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. We would love to hear how you have been impacted by this message. You can contact us at info at hillcity.ca or simply find us on Facebook and Instagram.